Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to uh, continue with our previous talk on theories. So today, we will, uh, we're will we going to discuss about one important aspect of uh, understanding theory is hypothesis. Now, hypothesis are a, a, a important uh, component of a theory, right? Because the hypothesis is the method or a, uh, the way with which we will test uh, validity of a theory. Today we have again Mr. Haryom with us. Um, what what is hypothesis and what's its value uh, again for physiotherapists? Uh, in a in a fairly uh, simpler, uh, I'll not get into the definitions of it. Uh, it's just a uh, based on your understanding, you have an intuition, I suppose. Um, so if you have an intuition, uh, say that, uh, saying that uh, if I give uh, IFT to uh, patients with low back pain and intuitively you think that uh, that will lead to some chemical changes in your muscle, that will lead to uh, reduction of pain, that basically is uh, hypothesis. Right. So uh, just to uh, uh, a quick recap with what we discussed uh, last week, we discussed hypothesis, I, I'm sorry, theory yeah. has something that, that, that explains how things work, right? So if we say that this is how pain works, or this is how IFT or tens work, right? The next thing is to test whether is it really working that way. A hypothesis or a more specific, as compared to theory, where you make, in simple ways, predictions about what will happen if I do this, right? So this prediction is what we needed to test. And only if these predictions are true, then it adds value to a theory. Now, what happens is if, if a theory is proposed and many uh, hypotheses are derived out of it, tested, and if more the more hypothesis is proves that the assumptions made based upon a theory is true, then that explanation is more likely to be true. And as new evidence comes, of course, this can always change. Now, the next question I want to ask is, the term hypothesis is uh, typically used only when it comes to research proposals. That is one question one section you have a uh, null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis. And apart from that, there is generally no talk of hypothesis in any other aspects of physiotherapy, education, or especially clinical practice. Do you think it has a value other than research? Actually, we, we just don't know uh, the word hypothesis, otherwise we keep on using it. Uh, if a patient comes to you and uh, uh, after uh, getting a history of the patient, uh, you assume, right? You hypothesize that this patient has uh, low back pain or ONE, uh, Parkinson's, or some other disease. So you actually make an hypothesis in your clinical practice. Probably then, many of us do not uh, distinguish that uh, whether we are assuming or is there a fact? Um, uh, Probably, um, because, uh, right, now I, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to answer that, but uh, uh, if, you, if you are... Uh, I meant to say that the assumption is something that uh, where we hold the certainty well, level is low, where the facts are you know high certainty level. So in I clinical understand. practice, we tend to... Uh, rely that we are having a high certainty in terms of what we think is the problem or cause of the problem. I understand that. Uh, if if I may, uh, uh, as you get more and more experience, you understand there is more and more uncertainty, and you you understand you are making an hypothesis rather than a, uh, sort of a clear cut. Uh, uh, clear cut test or no question kind of thing. Uh, even a test, uh, if you if you give a if you assume that a person is having, uh, say HIV or tuberculosis or um, uh, COVID or something like that, uh, again you are you are hypothesizing that this patient may have COVID and uh, uh, 
you are still not sure, but you want to make it sure via testing. And sometimes even after the testing, you are not very sure because of the problems in the testing, but we will not get into it. But we order a test or we request a test based on the understanding that we may not be sure of that. Right. So right, right. there are a lot of times we are making an assumption, we are making a hypothesis, but uh, we just don't use that as a word. Right. So the many of uh, our reasoning is uh, what we can uh, attribute to hypothesis. So that also means that all reasoning, uh, because uh, comes from some form of theory, right? Uh, right. Intrinsically, even again, we, we may not uh, explicitly recognize. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Say, for example, if you are, uh, if you are, uh, it, it, it's a common joke to say that uh, it includes, increases blood circulation and uh, these kind of things. But it comes from a definite theory that there is a, a chemical reaction when you have a, a pain, which is uh, peripheral in nature, uh, which produces cytokines and or uh, prostaglandins, that kind of uh, chemical things. And uh, when you give a either a, a short wave or an IFT, this may be washed away uh, and it uh, can reduce the pain. That is the hypothesis. Now, whether it works or not, that's the next part of it. But right. we all have a hypothesis based on a larger theory. Right. So uh, what I understand from this is uh, even though, to just summarize, even though we do not explicitly talk about hypothesis in, in clinical practice, but uh, our decisions uh, to choose a treatment or to request a test or to do a particular uh, diagnostic test, all are driven by hypothesis. And these hypotheses are generated from a, a theory. Yeah, because this is the uh, uh, hypothesis is the basic scientific method, which was probably started with the 10th and 11th century uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and probably uh, made famous by Galileo and Newton, I suppose. So that is the basics of what we call as a scientific method. Uh, the problem is uh, we are not taught what is a scientific method, just saying that we are people of science. That is the uh, reason I think uh, is the bigger issue. Right. I guess we got to go all the way back to school. Uh, I mean, we, <laughs> probably, uh, probably physics, well, biology as just uh, chunks of information. Yeah. And also we don't have a, a syllabus uh, called logic or a subject yeah. called logical thinking. I think it boils down to that. Right. So moving on, uh, uh, because we always uh, use hypothesis, which is in turn generated from a theory, as a clinician or as, as a medical professional in whichever part, uh, uh, branch you are in, that understanding theory and uh, hypothesis, and especially when, when we test it, if the result comes yes, no, or maybe, we should be able to develop and build from that, that, that understanding of scientific method is very critical even as a clinician. So if you can uh, uh, point out uh, how do clinicians uh, go from there? Do they, uh, let us say if, they are, if, you, if the hypothesis is correct or wrong, do people actually evaluate it or how do, you, how do they manage? I, I don't know how people manage, but I'll just, I'm assuming, uh, I'll tell in both ways that is, uh, or we will discuss in both ways whether uh, how we ought to do it and uh, some subconsciously we may also be doing some of it also right. uh, uh, say for example uh, when 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 the penge theory came uh, i was in college actually and uh, that was the time the penge theory was a sort of a big mystery and the, the new kid on the block kind of thing and from that theory uh, they develop what we call as a tense now. It was uh, one of the, um, in, in my lifetime, one of the uh, theories, uh, I mean, one of the equipments uh, derived from mm. a particular theory. And we all thought that, okay, this makes good sense. Uh, if you jam 
uh, one signal with another signal, then the pain might uh, go. And uh, and then we all tried it, and uh, it didn't help that much. Uh, it was not any good. Even we, we as a clinicians, uh, we thought that, okay, this is not uh, working. Uh, then some of us changed. Uh, some of us do, did not change, but we all should have uh, changed uh, because uh, the hypothesis was that if you jam it with other signal, it will go away. Why? It is not that the theory as such was completely false. It's just that the, the theory was uh, fairly narrow in its view rather than uh, uh, all-encompassing uh, complex phenomenon called pain. Right. So if what should uh, possibly happen? Say, if I'm a clinician, I, I recognize that my reasoning comes from a theory and I read that theory and, and and I look at experimental evidence. Also, not always we have to rely on clinical evidence because it has uh, high risk of bias. But let us say if there is uh, consistent evidence showing that certain hypotheses were not true, then what happens next? What should clinicians or researchers do? Uh, uh, you, you can see this uh, clearly in your practice. Uh, uh, if you have uh, if you have good observational skills, uh, leave alone the leave alone your biases and things like that. Right. If you have uh, good observation skills, you will notice that a lot of uh, patients are keeping on coming, especially if you have a uh, PA shoulder go and see in your clinic right. uh, did anybody get better with your treatment are they keeping on coming or are you blaming them for not doing the exercise properly these are all signs that uh, our treatment is inadequate that is our hypothesis is inadequate so our treatment is inadequate i suppose or the hypothesis is right but the treatment is not uh, good um, so what were reason so if you see that your patient is coming to you again and again, uh, that's what I mean by absorb properly. Because if you see your patient coming again and again, it's a good thing because you are making more money. <laughs> and if you are in a free clinic, uh, he's filling your senses, I suppose. So if you see it properly, then you will understand that, okay, I need to change. I should not be blaming the right. customer, right? So. Okay, the last part uh, which I wanted to discuss is uh, because I feel there is also some misunderstanding of what an hypothesis is. Uh, say, for example, uh, again, we may not recognize these sort of hypotheses, but uh, they are proposed as an hypothesis, such as, say, for example, uh, there are lots of clinical dogmas exist, which is kind of what a a, a, a particular expert has proposed and again without being tested or it is tested but we still did not look uh, actually have a look at right say there's a lot of such clinical dogmas out there some examples i can say about the recovery after the neurological lesion you know, it comes in certain sequences proximal to distal or in another dogma that if you have spasticity then you should not uh, give uh, any strengthening exercises and so on and so forth. There is many such dogmas in the form of hypothesis. I think that's a, a gray area how people see. So what? how should we see these things? Um, now, I learned a very good uh, word. Uh, what... Uh, uh, they use it in uh, language, but I have not seen it used in science. They call it as a uh, proto-science. Uh, that is, before you have a good understanding, uh, before you have things to look into, uh, say, for example, uh, before the advent of uh, microscope, we had no idea what was the uh, microscopic right. organ. So. so you develop a theory for that, uh, how this might be affecting and things. So um, my assumption now is that uh, Bobat or Brunstrom had, um, they had two problems. One is uh, the science was not that great uh, at that point of time. I'm not talking about physiotherapy science, but as uh, right. science as such. 
Now, the next thing is, um, uh, uh, they 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 over interpreted or whatever they uh, saw, I suppose. Um, so there is a, a there is a way of saying that these things may be uh, proto science, where there was no uh, good ideas, there was no. Uh, what I mean by good ideas is some understanding of what how the brain works, or some understanding of how the uh, mode of behavior works. Uh, so if 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 those things are not there, then you develop some some kind of uh, uh, theoretical understanding, and then you apply uh, form hypotheses from that, and then you try try all those. Things. Um, now, why do I say that these should be seen as a, a proto science? Is that a proto science is just the starting point. That is not the end mm -hmm. of it, or it does not need to be looked at as. Uh, the dogma of uh, the great people of Bobat or Goldstorm or something like that. We need to know to move on from that, right? So uh, I think that is where we need to have uh, uh, two things. One is uh, observe your patient and see whether they are actually working uh, and then have some courage to uh, move on. Right. Okay, so with this, uh, we'll come to the end of uh, today's discussion. Uh, let me just summarize. We discussed about what is an hypothesis, which is, uh, in simple words, the prediction of what will happen, uh, or prediction between, in, in technically, we'll say prediction between relationship with, uh, or between, predict, uh, between two variables, or in simple clinical ways, uh, we can say prediction of what will happen if you do this, right? And uh, the hypothesis is derived from a theory, so based upon assumptions from a theory. And experimental evidence will tell us whether such hypothesis is true or not. Clinically, we uh, our reasoning, our decisions are all based upon assumptions and also hypothesis. Uh, we should be wary about evaluating the results of our hypothesis. With uh, with if we have uh, less biased observation, we might be able to see what's happening. You know, at, at the individual level. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, uh, don't get stuck with uh, one idea, uh, because even though I am saying that man, Bobat was a proto science. I still think that we are in proto science period in the ways of physiotherapy. So we need to keep on evolving. If we don't evolve, then uh, we are never going to become a science. All right. So we'll meet again next time. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.